All right, welcome back to this very exciting session. I am so excited to talk to Marco Ghiberti about what event professionals need to know about M&As, this crazy event tech world that we're living in where companies are being bought and sold and investment money's flowing in. We've all seen those you know, news reports and the, the things coming out in the media about companies getting $500 million in funding and X amount of money. What does this mean? I think event professionals are having so much trouble just figuring out what does this mean for them? How do they predict what companies they should work with? How do they deal when a company that they love gets bought out and starts changing? There's just so much changing. So Marco, first of all, thank you so much for taking some time to join us today and talk about this. Uh, you are for sure an expert on this, but I'd love to have you kind of introduce yourself a little bit and talk about your background and why I would be even asking you these questions today. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for having me. Uh, my, my background is basically a combination between uh, live events as an organizer. I spent more than 20 years uh, organizing trade shows, conferences, corporate events. I sold my business to Reed Exhibitions, which is one of the largest event organizers after a long joint venture with them, and also technology and media. I studied technology companies and media companies from scratch to exit. Um, and uh, I spent the last 10 plus years investing and advising event technology companies. And I'm also a shareholder on specific events as a way to keep my event organizer brain active. And um, as you said, um, this is a, a very interesting time for event technology. Um, as, a, as a recovering event organizer, I keep thinking about event tech as a tool, um, but I also uh, struggle to understand which specific technologies uh, could and should help my events and how, and also how to understand potential upsides and risks on, on partnering with event technology companies. I know that's a uh, struggle that so many people deal with. We had our Taxi Talk collaborative meetup, and a lot of people were talking about just this pressure to keep up, to understand which companies are the right ones to work with. And it's hard when you see those lists of, you know, the checklist of features, and then everyone checks everything off, and you're like, I, I don't know if I'm recommending the right thing to my clients or not. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, it's a crazy time for event technology, obviously, tech event tech is not new, but the kind of influx of cash that's happening right now, I think post COVID, you know, starting in March, 2020 is new. Um, what do you have to share with our audience about just what's happening, kind of the macro picture of what this all means for the industry? Yeah, uh, just to set the tone from an investment perspective, uh, as you said, event tech is not new. Uh, it's probably a couple of decades old, uh, but progress from an investment perspective was slow. Um, because of different reasons. It's a very long explanation, but just to keep it simple, event technology was a nice thing to have and not a priority before COVID. And yeah. during COVID, it becomes a survival tool uh, for many event organizers, associations, uh, for-profit organizers, corporate organizers, every single category uh, engaged with technology from a different angle as a way to survive and keep their communities alive. If you analyze event technology startups, Pre-COVID, the official number was around 5,000 plus event technology companies, five to six billion dollars invested during the last uh, five years. Honestly, nobody knows the real numbers today. Uh, during COVID time, this number is way bigger uh, in terms of new startups and in terms of capital. Uh, we saw at least a couple of billion dollars during COVID moving into event technology uh, from growth, venture capital and private equity. And, and the number is always almost impossible to track because it's moving so fast. And every single week we see new funding rounds. Uh, this week was rain focus, last week was this or the other one. And, and, and these are pretty big rounds right now. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, which is very, very interesting. Now, if you analyze the reason why this is happening, of course, COVID was an accelerator, and that's part of the topic on our book uh, when we talk about the specific opportunity that COVID could and should generate for the events industry. But also, um, I keep talking about how big is the opportunity for event tech, and it was big before COVID. It's way bigger now because event tech now is before, during, and after the event. And if the event organizer or community builder is using technology in the right way, 
they're going to be able to capitalize event technology as an engagement tool, but also as a revenue tool. Um, the way that I analyze technology for specific events, it's pretty simple. I don't start thinking from a technology angle. I start thinking from a community angle and how, if it's a B2B event, can I help my buyers and sellers to connect on a better way, to engage on a productive way, and to extract value from the event value proposition. And the event value proposition used to be a couple of days, two, three, four days if it's a trade show. And after that, God bless you, we'll see you next year. Yeah. And now it's a little bit different. Um, now it's, it's uh, brands and sellers are expecting way more than three days. Buyers and visitors are also expecting a completely different value proposition. And technology is part of that, which means I, I think that it's a mistake to think that I should analyze technology before I clearly understand how can I help that community to do business together on a more productive way. Once I understand that community specific needs, I can start analyzing technology solutions that can be useful for that particular community for that mm -hmm. particular event. And if the focus for the event is education, is one set of technologies. If the focus of the event is commerce, it's a different one. If the focus of the event is just networking and lead gen, it's a different one as well. Which means I don't think that it's a turnkey solution that will fix on a magical way all your technology needs if you're a meeting planner. I think that it's um, a, a, an analysis that is very important to do uh, once you understand the value proposition, but also every year you will need to refresh your value proposition and adjust your technology as a way to keep it relevant for your audience. Especially during this time where things are evolving so fast, I, I'm constantly warning event professionals against getting into three to five year contracts with their favorite event tech company, mm -hmm. just because everything is changing so fast. You know, the yes. companies are being bought out and buying out other companies and that changes the dynamic. I'm sure we've all had the experience of a platform we love and they either buy someone out or get bought out and it completely changes and you no longer love it or the change is too slow and all these other platforms are doing better things now than you yes. wish you could switch over. Um, so that's, that's a really good um, insight there. What would you say event professionals need to know about kind of navigating, because of course all this money coming into the industry is a positive. There's a, so many opportunities, yes. but then there's the navigating challenges side of working with companies that are constantly changing and their support ebbs and flows. Sometimes they get back to you. Sometimes they don't even respond to your emails for weeks on end. Yes. What tips do you have for planners who are trying to just deliver for their clients? <laughs> uh, the, the first tip is that funding and raising money is just a signal. Uh, but it's not validation that that technology is going to be the best one and it's going to be there forever. I mm -hmm. think that some people read TechCrunch or similar publications and because this company raised X amount of money, life is beautiful and they're going to do a great job. Mm. It's not, unfortunately, it's not the case. Of course, if sophisticated investors are investing in one particular company, there is a clear signal that there is something there that is interesting. And it could be a fantastic founder that is a great storytelling and, and, and share the vision and raise money. But after that, there is an execution challenge that it's related to building the right technology and also uh, translating that technology to the meeting planner needs. And, and, and that's a massive issue. I think that the disconnection between technology companies slash geeks and event organizers slash, you know, normal people in some way, um, mm -hmm. it's still there. And it's not related to the amount of money that that particular company raised or how many employees or whatever. It's, it's, it's a simple mm -hmm. connection between how deep is their understanding on the meeting planner needs and also how they connect and help and service those meeting planners on a way that they can really leverage that technology. And there is a new generation of service providers, agencies, and consultants that are helping that connection and that translation between the tech company and the event organizer. And that's going to be a very important layer in our industry because many meeting planners, event organizers, they don't have the resources, knowledge, or, or, or people 
in order to uh, translate that tech, add services on top of that, and help their customers to capitalize that technology, which means I think that we're going to see a new generation of agencies and service providers connecting the right technology solutions with the right meeting planners and event organizers and adding value uh, and helping those organizers. As you know, hiring tech talent, digital talent, it's a massive challenge. Um, yeah. and, and, and let's be honest, for a strong digital person, probably working for a meeting planner or an event organizer is not the sexiest opportunity and, and, the, and the most attractive opportunity, uh, they would rather work on a, on a, on a tech startup or, or a, you know, Apple or, or a company like that, which means if we're able to partner with the right agencies and service providers, um, that will also help uh, in order to make that technology more uh, attractive. The other thing that I believe that is very relevant if you're a meeting planner is um, I will combine the, the best-in-class approach in comparison with the turnkey solution. Some event tech players are positioning themselves as platforms. We can give you every single feature. We can give you a turnkey solution. Forget about the rest. Some uh, event platforms are also saying, we're pretty good on this, this, and that, but if you want the best matchmaking solution or best whatever, uh, reg or whatever, we're happy to integrate through APIs uh, with yeah. deep technology integrations. I believe that if you're a big event organizer, a sophisticated meeting planner, you're probably going to move into the second choice, which is you want a best-in-class solution with those technologies working extremely well together instead of having a turnkey solution. Because the big events, the sophisticated organizers, they really want to provide their audiences best-in-class in every single category. And as you said before, those categories are changing super fast. Yeah. And it's almost impossible for everyone to be best in class in every single category. I'm tracking 25 plus event tech categories for the last 10 years. Um, and honestly, each of those categories are, uh, I see new players in those categories on a weekly basis. And some of those new players are very sophisticated, yeah. BC backed, sophisticated founders, which means, uh, there is a lot of interesting opportunities if you move into the best in class approach. Yeah, that's an age old event tech question. Is it better to go with one tool that says they do everything or mix and match? And I think a lot of planners go the turnkey route because it seems easier. They don't have yes. to learn all these different tools. They don't have to figure out all the integration points. But to your point, the downside is your attendees are not getting the best in class experience somewhere along the line, whether it's yeah. registration or the engagement or whatever it is. Um, so I really, I hope that that is the case, that more people will go that route. I, I think definitely the bigger brands, but even the smaller brands, it's it's upon us to learn how to integrate these technologies and to, to kind of make, do the hard work to find the best in class options for our yes. clients and our stakeholders. Um, and that's gonna be obviously great for our whole industry if we can push ourselves to do that. Yeah, and, and you mentioned before uh, this M&A trend in our event tech industry, this is just starting. We're gonna see tons of M&A mm -hmm. happening during the next five or 10 years because all that capital going to the, all those thousands of startups at some point uh, the big guys, well-funded, they're going to go out and buy. And this is already happening. If yeah. you see the top five uh, plus event tech platforms, they're all buying and they're pretty aggressive on M&A. And, and this is not going to slow down. Um, and, and that's great. Actually, I'm spending more time on M&A because some of the startups that I work now for five, six years are starting to buy companies. And some smaller startups are saying, you know what, instead of raising more capital, we want to partner with the right company and, and, and do a partnership with them and exit with them. And, you know, as I did with my own event business, that, that's a fantastic way as a, as a founder to capitalize and exit and, and grow faster with someone that will provide additional resources, distribution channel, uh, blah, blah, blah. Which means I think that that is going to continue to happen. There is nothing wrong if your uh, technology provider is acquired by someone else. Of course, acquisitions are always risky, and 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 we also uh, horror stories about acquisitions. But <laughs> I, I will I will have a very honest conversation with the technology provider, and I will try to move on into the next phase with them, trusting that 
their technology is going to be better and and hopefully they can integrate with a bigger company with further solutions and support into the next phase having said that if if you're one of the big planners or organizers uh, I think that this best-in-class situation is going to stay around for a very long time because um, this industry is growing so fast that we're going to see new categories come in on a regular basis. And in each of those new categories, the sophistication from the founders and the technology is going to be pretty important, which means for the big guys, it's going to be almost impossible to catch up in every single feature and new technology as it's happening with big tech. If you see Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, they're just buying the right players at the right time. And, and they mm -hmm. can do that because they have the resources to do that. We're going to see a pretty similar situation. And now you saw probably Zoom events, new player, massive tech company. Are they going to do M&A in the future? Probably. Are they going to invest heavily building their product? For sure. Which means we see the the Cvent or Hopin or Bizebu, the traditional big players who raise a lot of money in this space. But we're also seeing the Zoom or even Microsoft with yeah. Teams and all the stuff that they're thinking. Uh, because right now, every single meeting is an event. And, and all these virtual events are moving into hybrid model. I, I just wrote a blog post a couple of weeks ago about hybrid because hybrid is an endless conversation about event technology and event organizers. And my thesis is it's no longer about hybrid events. It, it's about a hybrid world. Uh, yeah. What's happening with remote work or telemedicine or all those massive industries that are changing super fast because of the COVID lifestyle, it's also happening around events. And, and if you're a meeting planner and using technology for your event, you need to think, which specific activities around my event community must happen face-to-face -face, and the rest should be digital and I should partner with the right technology to support those digital interactions probably all year long and, and only keep the face-to-face -face interactions for those things that are almost impossible to do on a digital basis. That's happening in remote work, and if you see the big debate on, on remote work and the future of work, yes. we're going to have a similar debate about the future of events because we're going to be living on a hybrid world and technology is going to be a key component of that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, so t talk to me about if you kind of like follow the money, right? You, you mentioned the money is going into a company. It doesn't mean they're going to be amazing tomorrow. But what are we seeing? What are some of the trends that you think event professionals should keep their eyes on? The, the investors are putting their money on what? What are those things that we... That, the, that investors are, the investors <laughs> are obsessed with SaaS, software as a service, recurrent revenues, uh, scalable software solutions, because those companies are super profitable and scalable, which means mm -hmm. there's a ton of money moving into SaaS companies uh, because that business model for software is validated and is growing and is predictable and... Everything that you want from an investment perspective, SaaS uh, is attractive. On, on the other side, I, I believe that investors are going to in, invest a lot of time and resources on new categories that are going to be relevant in five or 10 years. A classic example is AR and VR. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking about AR and VR for 10 plus years. Nothing dramatic happened yet, but at some point it's going to happen because the virtual meeting using AR and VR is going to be very attractive. Facebook, Google are investing billions of dollars on technology that will have an event application yeah. at some point, uh, which means investors are going to be looking, how could I be creating the next generation of technologies that are going to allow that the meeting is more human, the product presentation is more productive, the matchmaking solution, AI solution is more scalable and productive. Those technologies are going to be very relevant and money will follow those technologies. Again, don't think that event tech is very different to any other event technology category because those big exponential technologies are going to be relevant for retail, for travel and for events. And, and investors are going to be thinking how could the event industry could leverage this specific technology and when. And I think we're going to see a lot of venture capital 
money coming uh, more aggressively in the next five years, but also private equity money, uh, buying uh, companies and merging companies. And that's going to generate a big interest from smart founders to say, you know what, I can probably build something scalable and profitable around events. Uh, it's finally there. And, and that is probably the most exciting thing for me, because if you have the right founders, money will follow them. Um, and, and those founders are going to attract the right capital and the right talent to our industry. There's so much good information. I want to just keep soaking it all up. I feel like we could talk forever, but we are tight on time. Is there anything else that you want to make sure you get across in this discussion to event professionals and, and just what they need to know on this topic? <laughs> I think that I will emphasize the fact that don't think about event as a as a weird, strange thing. Think about event uh, technology as a tool for your event value proposition. That message for me is very, very important. And that message will trigger the way that you and your company interact with, with the technology vendors. And also think if you can find the right agencies, partners, consultants that will uh, help you to take a shortcut into the right solutions, uh, trusted and validated technology solutions, and, and work with them with a long-term partnership view. Amazing. And and I do want to give you an opportunity to talk about reinventing live, if you would like to mention it at all. <laughs> yeah, of course. We, we we published the book early this year uh, with a good friend and and and, and partner, uh, Denzel Rankin from AMR. The, the thesis on the book is that it's finally time for the live events industry to reinvent their business model. And we wrote the book in the very early days of COVID, uh, March 2020. Honestly, without thinking that the world is going to change so dramatically, but we created a thesis, a model, and different case studies on how the live events industry could and should be reinvented. And of course, technology is its a core component on, on the book, but also innovation and strategy. And hopefully we're helping event organizers, meeting planners, and also technology founders and investors to understand from different angles and testimonials how our industry could and should be changing in the next five or 10 years. I love it. So we're going to buy a couple copies of the book to give out to those who are watching today. So if Thank you're you. watching and you're interested, put it in the chat right now, let us know, and we'll select a few people to give the book to because this is not only the information you shared today, but the book as well, just really good thought provoking things that we should all be reading. So um, thank you, Marco, so much for your time. I know you're very busy in this crazy climate, but really appreciate you taking some time to chat. Thank today. you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye.